Watch Destiny Matters here on REST TV, Thursday and Sunday nights with Pastor Charles Casabanti. Jeremiah chapter 1, Yeremia is to Lesoka. And verse 11 and 12. And this particular portion of scripture, Jeremiah is meeting, is having the first interaction with God. He has never talked to God before. And uh, the word of God comes to him. His calling is in a short time. By chapter 5, I mean, I mean by verse 5 of chapter 1, the Lord begins to remind him how he knew him before he was formed. So the scenario of chapter 1 of the book of Jeremiah is an introduction of God to Jeremiah. At this time, Jeremiah has no experience of the prophetic. But God is introducing him to himself to him. There are many people in this congregation today. You are about to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. And God is going to introduce himself to you. In the Bible, God did it. He introduced himself to people. Remember when he met Moses? He says, I'm the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Isaac and Jacob. So that you don't conflict me with another God. When he met with Jacob as he's running away from his, his brother. He said, I, I am the God of Abraham and Isaac. And God loves to be clear about his introduction. So Jeremiah 11. Jeremiah begins to get his first prophetic encounter. Jeremiah begins to get his first prophetic encounter. And it's interesting the kind of words that he chooses. The words that Jeremiah uses. The choice of the language. He says, and the word of the Lord came to me. It sounds like the word was not where he was. But the word made a movement. It came from wherever it was. And it came to him. That is a very powerful choice of words. And he says, in other words, the word of God is moving God. It's a moving word. And whatever moves is a living word. So he says the word has the ability to move from one place. And it can come to a man. So the word came to me. This, this young man, 17 years old, he's getting his first prophetic encounter. He's about to begin moving into the prophetic. But God is trying to train him about his integrity and character. So the word came to him and said, Jeremiah, if you're going to be an authentic prophet, you must be able to see and to hear well. So the first thing that he told him, I want to test your sight. What do you see? Verse number 11. And the word came and Jeremiah and he said to him, What do you see? Jeremiah 1 and verse 11. And I said, he's is responding. I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. Look at verse 12. And the Lord said to him, said to me, You have seen well, for I will hasten 
Mbaya word to perform it. Praise the living God. So what God is telling Jeremiah. I have a character. Of watching over my word. To make sure it comes to pass. So he's trying to train a young prophet. That never fear to say what I tell you to say. When I say it. I will be right behind it. Praise the Lord. So if it is me that said it, I'll be behind it. But for you to have confidence in what I'm saying, you have to see well. You know, sometimes you preach and you feel such a revelation. If you do not see well, you cannot have the confidence of what God has said. This is why one of the things God would deliver on you in this season. You have to start seeing the right thing. 2021, begin to see God ahead of you. See God changing your story. Lift your voice and your, and your eyes and see. And you say, I see the Lord. Exalted. So in other words, God is saying you have sinned correctly. For I will hasten my word. I will not delay. I will bring it to pass. I want to declare to everybody here tonight. If you have a word of God in you. Spoken about you. Spoken over you. It means that God is watching over that word. And if God is watching over the word. Then he is watching over you. Yes, sir. Because you are the container of the word. Let me make a statement, a prophetic statement for you. You are not permitted to die until the word you saw has come to pass. So if you carry a word of God in your spirit, we're going to war concerning the word. First Timothy 1 and 18. The Bible says, and Paul is talking to the young man Timothy. It says you're coming into ministry. And in ministry there will be a prophetic word coming on you once in a while. But the prophetic word is given to you to be the environment of your warfare. In other words, when God releases a word to you, First Timothy, not Matthew, can you hear us please? First Timothy. The chapter 1 and verse 18. That when God releases a word for you in the season, He causes you to give you a reason to fight. Why must you win? Because God said you must win. What, why must you get where you, where you are going? Because it is in your prophetic DNA to become what God said you must become. So God says begin to war in the spirit. But war in the environment in the environment of the prophecy. This charge, First Timothy 1 18, this charge I commit unto you, thee, my son. According to the prophecies which went before you, that you may to war a good warfare. So, in other words, uh, prophecy is not for you to sleep over and say, wow. Prophecy is meant for you to go and war for it. It is a directional prayer. Whatever God has pointed you for, it is worth fighting for. 
So prophecy will give you is like a compass for your life. You will not go away from the word of God. What God is saying focus on the on the uttered word about your future. If you're going to war at all, then the battle must be about the prophecy. I know you're going to catch this tonight. If you're going to fight at all, then begin to fight about what they spoke over your life. It is the spoken word over your life which is going to give you the environment of your warfare. You know why it is powerful to pray and, and fight within the prophecy? Because God is only over obligated to help you within his word. I don't want to rush. There's no need to rush. God is obligated to help you within his word. The government of Uganda has an obligation to help you within the constitution. It is not a gift for you when they give you your passport. It is your right. It is their obligation to give you a passport. But listen to me. Even you. Once you are in the word of God. You begin to war in that word. Then you become dangerous in the hands of Satan. Satan. Every other warfare is empty. Two things you need to learn to write down, everybody. Learn to write down prophetic words about you. Learn to write prophetic dreams. And learn to write your prayer requests. Make it a habit. If you hear a man of God speak a word or a woman of God a word over your life, what you do immediately, if you trust that that's the voice of God, write it down. Because God will fulfill it. But in the middle of it coming to pass, there is a need for you to begin to war in those words. I, I want to drop some things in, in your spirit. You need to understand, people of God, that there is always two generations living on earth. There's either one of them or the other at any given time. There is a generation that is going to hear the promise. And there is a generation that is going to see the promise. We are always in those two dispensations. We are either hearing a new promise or we are receiving the answer to the promise. But one thing is consistent or is systematic on all of them. Both of them need to war to hear the promise. To cause God to leave the heaven. And speak to you about a future. You need to be in a place of war. I'll show you scripture this weekend. And to cause God to bring to pass a prophetic word in your generation you need to be in a place of war now when I, when, when, when I talk about this I'm not talking about you, you, will, excuse, you will excuse me for a little bit tonight I'm not talking about you paying your house rent your level rent I'm not talking about the guy who's going to marry you. 
I'm talking about downloading the mind of God for generation. Some of you are here. You are the embodiment of the promise of our time. You carry something that is bigger than you. But that does not come from surface. Surface. Such things come from the place of prayer. Do you realize that in the book of Genesis, the Bible says, and, and God came to Abraham. While Abraham is praying about a child, his own child. Lord, take away the reproach. At least give me one son. I'll praise you. I'll exalt you. Let me give birth to one son. The Bible says, and when God came down, He looks at Abraham. And He says, Abraham, a people are coming out of you. They will be slaves in the land called Egypt. And in the eyes of their enemies, I will be building a nation. And after a while, I will take them out, not as an individual, but as a country. And he says, you will not see it. But God has said, I will release it for you. Abraham had to be in a high level to hear that. Abraham had to be in a high level to hear that. But also the ones who God is going to use. They also have to connect with God. To download the promises of God. There are people in this congregation. Nobody knows where you are going. But I can sense in my inner core. You are about to surprise even those who give birth to you. Because as we are in the place of prayer. God will download to you ideas that no man has ever conceived. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. And Psalms 105 David re re remembers the story of Egypt and begins to spek about it. Psalms 100 Psalms 105 if we have some time, we shall read a couple of verses there. In this psalm, David is giving thanks to God. He says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. From verse 1. Verse 1, please. From verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. And make known his deeds among his people. Sing to him and sing psalms to him. Talk of his wondrous works. Glory in his name. Let the hearts of those who rejoice, let the hearts of those, let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. David is speaking to the generation that seeks the Lord. Agamba, Agamba, let the hearts of those that seek the Lord. Verse number three. Verse number three, please. Stay with me. You, you get a monitor there and hear what I'm saying. The hearts of those that seek the Lord. Let them rejoice. I'm praying for everybody here. That your heart will rejoice. Because you have sought the Lord. Help me say amen. 
He says, glory in his name. Let their hearts rejoice. For they seek the Lord. Do I have anybody here who is not seeking for anything else? And he says, give me Jesus. And the rest will follow. May the hearts who seek the Lord. Rejoice in him forever. Verse number four. He says, seek the Lord. Seek his strength and seek his face forevermore. David is saying to the people, I want to show you the, the reasons down there. He says, This God has an ability to execute what he has in his mind, what he has in his heart, and what he spoke through the prophets. He has the power to bring it to pass. But if a generation or an individual we receive what is in the mind of God, then they have to seek the law and seek his ability and seek his face. Many people love to talk about it. People can shout amen about it. But to seek the Lord is a commitment somebody makes. Verse number five. Remember his marvelous works which he did. His wonders. And the judgment of his mouth. Verse number six is now on you. All you seed of Abraham, who was his servant, you children of Jacob. I know you are chosen, but you must seek the Lord. You are already seed of Abraham, but seek the Lord. Find out what God has for you in 2021. Download the mind of the Father. This is why I've been pushing you and compelling you to be in the place of prayer. Because God is about to step into, into your house. And once he comes in, he will talk. Oh God. Even today on the altar he will speak. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. The word which he commanded for a thousand generations. Tell your neighbor God, will, God remembers his word. His word will be oh, even though they pass generations. His word will not be forgotten. Verse 9 says, and his oath that was unto Abraham and Isaac. He confirmed it with Jacob to become a statute and to Israel as an everlasting covenant. And he said, I will give you the land of Canaan. The promise is from Abraham. But God said, I will fulfill it. Generations may pass, but there shall be a group of people which will download the promise of God. I pray for you to be a partaker of the promises of God. You won't just speak about them. When God says He heals, you'll walk in the healing. When He says He delivers, you'll walk in deliverance. When He says He blesses, you'll see what we call being blessed. For He keeps His word after a thousand generations. It did not forget. If God can remember for a thousand generations, how can you be telling me about two years? You know, I was in Nigeria. 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 I was in
know the Lord told me I'm, I'm going to get married Come two years ago. I don't think he really meant it. Yes, yes God meant it. 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 And he remembers his word. You know, God told me I was serve nation. Ten years ago, he will strengthen his company. But I'm getting somewhere to this with this scripture. Yes. When verse 12, when the were filled with the Holy Ghost, indeed very few. And strangers in the land. The promise came to them that Canaan is yours. Now I want to say the promise came to them that Canaan is yours. It means God does not speak about your present situation. When God looks at you, He speaks about your, your a future you have never seen in, in your life. When there were few in number, yes, very few. In other words, I spoke to them and the word did not look like them. But the word is about to become like them. There were few in number. There were strangers. But I promised them a land. I want to declare the prophetic utterance upon your life. God is going to watch over his word. I'm setting the pace for the weekend. This weekend, weekend yes. we are fighting in the prophecy. Everybody here, you have a word from God. This weekend, weekend yes. we are going to cause the God of Abraham who fulfilled the word for a thousand generation. Ours is only ten years old. Or five years old. Or five years old. Two years old. I'm calling upon God. Let what you say come to pass in my time. Oh. Should I declare something? Will you say I pray for all of you, whatever they prophesied over you. Oh, You'll see it in its time. It won't pass time. Can I make it simpler? I'm praying for you. You will not begin to travel nations when you're too old to even enjoy life. You not start driving cars and you can't even see the road. You are going to not give you a seven acre house and you can't even walk the compound. You're old, you can't even move for, for just five minutes. We are calling the listen, we are calling the word to happen in real time. Not more, not less. It has to be on time. Tell your neighbor it has to be on time. My God, it has to be on time. I declare here on the altar the word has to be on time. You shall be healed on time. You shall rejoice on time. God will perform his word on time. There were few in number Strangers in the land And I told them I will give you what is yours Men of you here You are a moving prophecy But you are about to become the reality We are going to war in the prophecy I will not say we are going to war with the past. We are going to fight within the prophetic. God, did you really say that is the fasting of this weekend? 
I want people that have a word. Whether it is Rema, Logos, or prophecy. Whether it is written in the word. Or it came to you as a revelation. Or it was a prophetic dream. This weekend. God is about to follow after his word. There are those who have no word on them at all. They are saying, Pastor, but for me there is no word on me. Me. Come and fight and receive a word. Can I tell you something? Life has a meaning when it has a promise. Life is hope when there's a promise. My Lord. Don't walk blind. God knows how to speak about the day you've not seen before. Okay, time. 13, 13, 13. But 13. Moses, go and get from my, my Bible in, in the office. This battery is down. 13, please. Take your I'm depending on you. Mm. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, this, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He even rebuked kings on their behalf. And he said, Touch not my anointed one. Do my prophets know her? Everybody in the building, can I declare tonight? The moment you carry a prophetic word, you are a touch not. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Look to your neighbor and tell him what part of the service do you want. I'm telling you the truth. If you begin to carry a word, you become a touch note of the Lord. I declare tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost. That says the Lord. No witchcraft can touch you. Because you are on your way to fulfilling a prophecy. No devil can stop your destiny. You are on your way to becoming what God said you must become. God is about to rebuke your, 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 your enemy. Come online. On this altar, I best to declare. God will rebuke your enemy. Touch not my enemy. For he says to come a call you're going to come a foot. Oh, yeah, in oil embassy, I will not be. That is an embassy of the prophecy. Don't do anything, don't do harm to my prophet. Napi wang get a mokola, kabiko na. Musum kono gambe, I'm a touch not. Gamandia chuchibata komako. Because I'm anointed. Kwande kama futa. Oh, 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 oh. I am a touch not of the law. Because I'm anointed. Prepare to see this in your life. There are people who will fall before you without you fighting them. Come on, there are wars you are about to win without lifting up your hand simply because the one who touched you touched the anointed of God because he told Jeremiah wherever my word is I watch over my word to make sure it comes to pass the moment you hibernate a prophetic word you become a touch not of God I see you overcoming some demons this season you shout a bigger man my God give you a miracle now there are demons who are destroying this week. 
even sorcerers that will call your name on the altars and fire will burn their altars because they have called you upon your name and I may not tell you because it is a shame but it will happen in Jesus name some of you God is jealous is jealous of you he's loving you jealously because you are an inch better of the prophetic word you will carry of the future that's why some of you young ladies here some young men can't even play with your destiny because you are a carrier of a future you are a touch not of God But Mahadesa Akatala Jakatela Baya. Yes. I decree and declare God will make sure that even if there are kings in the city, they will be rebuked for your sake. Even if you supervisor, even if he's your boss, if they are in between your way and God is promised, they have touched the anointed of God. The promise on Abraham is this. Let me preach for two minutes and then we go home. Yes, sir. The promise says Genesis 12. Whosoever blesses you will be blessed. Whosoever curses you, you don't have to curse them. They will be. House of inspiration, you gotta help me tonight. House of inspiration, the blessing you have upon your life already has power to curse whoever is cursing you. I pity the sorcerers. Whoever calls upon your name for evil, he has called upon himself a curse. I feel in my spirit. This year 2021, you will see people coming to repent before you. Those are wicked men. I will say, I have come to repent. I have plotted a day. But at the moment, the more you progress, what is upon you? What do you carry in your life? Because you have a covering upon your life. Who has an umbrella here? Thank you, Angie. You are in the spirit. May God always bless you and favor you. Mm. Yes. Let me explain the promise. And why you have to pray. Many believers become weak because they have the umbrella. Because they have the promise of God on their life. This umbrella is, is powerful. Umbrella no yaman. But this umbrella does not is not as good until it is put in use. The prophecy is here. But when it begins to rain, and I don't open this umbrella, it will rain on me. God did not lie. I have it. I walk with it. But it is entitled on me that when it begins to rain, I open it. And I begin to move. Then even rain begins to wander. We were supposed to rain on him. But why is a 
and he becoming weight. You don't have any business with the rain. No need to pray that rain go away. All you have to do is to open your umbrella. And you say, it can rain for the next two years. I have a covering of my life. This covering you have is the promise of God. It is activated in prayer. Tell your neighbor we have to pray. Tell the other one, open your umbrella. And you, prayer now opens it. And the covering is there. So your enemy sends the arrows, he wonders why you're not affected. This thing, we are, you know, all of us can be here. It is raining, it won't, I'm going to be safe. Not because I'm not where it is not raining. Eh? Because the rain is not there. 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 But I have an umbrella. Na ye, mbiki duako. There is a very, very sharp difference between the promise oh, let me even say it better between your stand in God let me say it better, pass again between your status in God and your stand and your stand Again, then pull up. Yes, sir. Pull again. Hmm? Mm. Your status. A daralio, but Wally, Charlie, Charlie Mukaton does not necessarily mean your stand. Sit each carcasses that dollar into a new day. of you know that so many people are married and not necessarily happy. So, your this is your marriage certificate. When they marry you, they give it to you. That is what you call status. So you are married by certificate. But that is not your stand. You can have the certificate and be as good as single because it is a status not a stand. Status is given. Stand is achieved. So this you know. Is what people see. But what becomes a reality is what you're going to access to make sure that this status is your real stand. Let me give you an example. I was in Uganda and it's an African problem. It is an African problem. We care a lot about status. Understand. You rather everyone assumes you have money. You rather. Or, or fire or fire that people see you that you have money. That is status. But in the stand. So whatever it takes to make yourself look rich. In fact, there are people 
whose investment of time and everything is about appearance. But the stand is weak. You want to sound wise. So you quote people's quotations. And they go like, wow. Wow. Status. But in actual sense, even you wonder if you know what you know. <laughs> Too many what God is doing now is delivering you from status only he's about to make you arrive into the actual stand tell your neighbor I'm a touch note of God everybody in this service God of Jesus will speak good words Lord of Jesus, we speak good of you. Verse 16. Moreover, he called a famine in the land. He destroyed all their provisions of bread. He sent a man before them. His name is Joseph. Who was sold as a slave. But all that God is doing. He is trying to fulfill a word. And for every generation. Somebody plays a role in the word of God. Joseph your privilege. You are where you are because there is a word. God does not fear to lead you into a foreign country with any means possible as long as there is a word on you. He sent a man before them. That the, but the them right now, the them are not even yet born. Now you are in the service. Is there anybody who came to pray? Ask your neighbor, did you come to pray or you to just supervise? To spy. He went before them. My Lord. But the them are yet to be born. Never so kayo banatero kusariwa. They don't exist yet. Tebaina webali. But God knows they are coming. Nemo kama chimani wajja. And He sends a man before them. Nafuna guava so sayo. But the man He sends before them. Now no guava so sayo. Does not go in a limousine. Tagende na limousine. Verse eighteen. They put his feet in fetters. And they laid iron bars on him. He's moving and he thinks his life is in trouble. But because he's a carrier of the world, you can hurt his feet. You can put iron on him. But you can't kill him. Oh, tell somebody you can do all you want to do to me. But you can't kill me before my time. I am a carrier of the word of God. Jesus. He's going before them. I want you to despise every situation before them. I tell you, you can't handle it. I'm a carrier of the world. No matter where. Whether they will go in chains. Whether they have that in their Whatever God says. Shall come to pass. There's a next verse that will make you great. Joseph goes in chains. He has even a, 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 a of that of the prisoners. Yet he carries a word. Verse 19. Until the time 
that his word came to pass the word of the Lord tested him the word is our strength it will not let go and it has been perfected the strength you can is in the word of God it will come to pass not only did the word come to pass the word tested him can you believe me can you trust me the word was testing Joseph my lord and when the word came to pass the one who went with fetus and an iron bar look at verses 20 and the kings sent for him. For God will rebuke the kings on your behalf. And he will say, Touch not my anointed one. Nenda kula gula yongu unga kumantu kumina muenda. Professor, I have 19 people here. Katondo we chisa. The Lord of Grace. Po yingi na musiso ni echi gambo chyo. When you enter the season of your word. Naba antube wala vila ange wala. Even the people used to see from afar. Nenda kube simu nga bano nyagu. They will call looking for you. Oh, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. My God. I just want to pray right now. Yes, sir. The word of God came to pass. The word tested him. But after he passed the test, the kings could not be quiet. They sent for him. They released him. The ruler of the people let him go free. 2021. Somebody is on an assignment to let you go free. Some people can clap their hands and rejoice for the word. Verse 21. He became Yafuka. God made him Lord over his house and a ruler of all his possessions. The man who came in fetters and chains. Never, never let anyone despise you. Will you carry the word? The word will talk. Prophet Habakkuk saw a vision. In chapter 2. And he says. He says do not flit over the, these revelations. Once you see a revelation. He says write it down on tablets. Make it plain on paper. In the book of Habakkuk chapter 2. The Bible says. Bible he says when you see them. Write them plain on a piece of paper. That whosoever will read them will run. For the revelation you have seen is for an appointed time. And in the end, it will speak. It will not be quiet. Shaka. In the end, it will speak. It will not lie. From verse 2. Thank like you, Holy Spirit. Write down these revelations. Make them plain on tablets. So that, so that those that hear it may run with it. For this revelation, verse 3, is for an appointed time. It speaks of the end. And it will not be proven false. What you saw in the spirit speaks of a particular end it will not lie it will surely come to pass 
I energize you and raise you up in the spirit to run back to the God who spoke to you. The word of God will test your faith. And yet it needs there is the answer for it. Praise God. Come here. So Joseph is sent. He's been released. And the kings have called him. Let me show you only a few verses we pray. In verses 22. He was given the power and the ability. That even though before he was, he was nobody. Psalms 105 and verses 23. Are today back to today he says, and, and then. The, he began to instruct the princess and he was pleased and he began to teach the elders praise the living God verses 23 then Israel entered Egypt Jacob became residence in a foreign land verses 24 this is a verse everyone should underline and God increased the people so great and he made them stronger than their enemies I prophesy because of the word of God which is coming to pass in your life by the end of this weekend you will be stronger than your enemy raise your hand and declare I shall be stronger than every enemy of my destiny Whoever is in this service, may the Spirit of God strengthen you. I'm praying for spiritual strength for everybody. So we're going to pray for only a few minutes. Then I'm going to pray for you. There is a place in God where you're too big for any enemy. In fact, let me say it better. There is a place in the things of the spirit where demons look at you and they have nothing to, to, to do with you. God took them to a foreign land as Joseph had gone ahead of them. And when they got there, they began to increase and multiply. God is doing this right in the face of their enemies. You need to understand some things in your life are happening as the witches are still alive. There are things going on in your destiny right now. God is busy turning things around. When demons are there watching, I sense in my spirit the day is coming, the day is now. When God will give you a special umbrella. That you have no even knowledge of what is going on around you. But you're covered. My prayer is that God will allow you. To see a day of this kind. The day you prosper when an enemy is watching but does not know what is going on. That they multiplied and they became stronger than their enemy. Stronger. Ba 
Days will come when you can despise what used to despise you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but there's somebody here. You'll be stronger than your enemies. Some of you are struggling with depression. You sit in your house, you cry alone. But the day is coming when you sit alone and laugh alone. Watch Destiny Matters here on REST TV, Thursday and Sunday nights with Pastor Charles Casabanti.